Hmm. How, How does, does this thing, thing work? work? Da, 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 da. Is this, this thing, thing on? on? These yeah. aren't even working, but I can see the level over there. How do you see the level over there? Huh. I don't know. Doesn't matter. So oh, I have a great poem about a cat and bananas and mazes, but you're going to have to wait about five, ten minutes because I'm trying out a new branding strategy where I delay the gratification, y'all. No, I'm going to cut right to the chase. I cannot believe this cat. He is still shedding. I have pulled so much hair off. Constant. Don't do it every day. Constant, potentially. Will essentially never, ever stop. Lol, I don't do it every day, but this is bananas. So you must take breaks. It happens. Life forms shed, truly. It's amazing, not bananas. Lol, bananas grow on trees. They are out of reach. Mind goes through mazes. Lol, a maze a day keeps the axon sharp. Um, nerb? <laughs> Lol, yep. Something to that effect. <laughs> Let's put this down. All right. What am I even getting at? Something to that effect, right? It's just like that. <laughs> I can use audio engineering and physics terminology to describe my mental operations, but it's not a metaphor. They contain proper dynamical analogs for the components of trauma as they operate in subroutines of doubt, anxiety, and sensation that oscillate with strange modulators like stress, reflection, and perception. Not just the smooth, calm weather, ocean, sine waves, but strange triangle waves where they go up, 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 and fall right back and start again. I was describing this and my therapist said, oh, like the stock market crashes, and she laughed. Later, when I laughed at myself for finding the audio to MIDI feedback to model my mind well, she looked a bit oddly thoughtful. I reminded her that I laughed similarly to when she laughed at the thought of the stock market triangle wave crash. That made sense. It's easy to laugh when learning a new empty idea container and your imagination suddenly leaps into it and sees how it can put anything into itself. Hmm. Putting something back into itself, hold on to that phrase sample. I also suggested my brain kind of did what's called a sample and hold modulation source rather than a sine wave source. So instead of rising up in mood, mood then dipping down in mood and gradually alternating or quickly but just as evenly, a sample could be taken pseudo-randomly and held for a set length of time. For example, taking a sample of an exact sine wave, but just as evenly, a sample could be taken that would just be monotone. Or just, or like one of those more annoying high piercing tones, right? Hmm. Computers and gross beeps, right? <laughs> However, my mind obviously demonstrates the obsession over tinkering with samples and holds, and also signal feedback in order 
precisely to rupture what is normal. But only because what is normal did historically take itself to be on a mission, antithetical to my very ecological existence. It's always, it's always impossible in the semantic today to trace the past connecting to the future. And this appears true in the case of accurate historical accountability about horrors of injustice and the waste of biodiversity. It appears true in the mind of a trauma victim directly routing their reflection in the moment toward injury in the past in order to relieve pain in the future. It appears true in the production and experience of sequencing, mixing, and transforming audio video signals. It appears true in the crosstalk between groups of neurons that seems possible to modulate with certain rhythms in certain modalities to the point of epileptic seizure. Imagine what I feel. My own brain is like trying to maneuver the crosswalk when random traffic might appear and not want to slow down at that moment or, on the other hand, angrily wish to speed up. These streams of traffic might not know each other and be heading in completely the opposite directions. In complex dynamical systems, feedback can occur. Or putting something back inside itself, like I mused about the outputs and inputs of imagination up there. Feedback occurs where outputs of a system can return into the inputs in such a way that the value of the input rises continuously as it adds to the output. Hence, going around and around, increasing the overall total level of the signal. Self-oscillation should draw close and careful consideration. Totally runaway feedbacks of systems with no net or even gross external inputs may happen. This is like what happens in an audio software plugin when it internally generates some small static that is intended to blur an effect or introduce some variability in the processing. Sometimes in particular, the plugin has a feedback parameter pushed high enough and routed in a way that builds with the static and causes a runaway build and level. The thing is, for systems on Earth, absolutely every single one is an open system, not closed. Sometimes there is just noise there to begin with and the system may slowly churn at a low level, but then oscillation could eventually occur. As an audio mixer and musician, I can demonstrate this in a short time. I will be quiet for less than a minute. First, I will introduce one effect, some kind of echo reverb, that I will then slowly turn up the feedback, and we will see what happens when output returns to input, and it seems not much is happening.
I randomly drew that pattern. I'm not hearing any feedback or sound. I'm going to make that sound feedback follow the random directions I gave, because that's possible with inputs and outputs of a mechanical, physical, quantum, biological, mental, psychological, social, cultural nature. Sometimes when actively playing music through a signal process, due to the complexity of modulations between the inputs and outputs, the output signal, which reaches the input, does not drive the system to self-oscillate. However, when the performance ends, somewhere between the ambient environmental noise, some monotony in some signal's persistence, or the spontaneous noises within the system modulating itself, out-of-hand feedback might just run away. The system could explode, threatening the building the system resides within, and even interfere with desirable electronic or message transmissions or destroy infrastructure. It could cause hanging instabilities like social and cultural conflict to instantly spiral into deep darkness. And it could even alter the relation between economy and climate. It could affect geological motions in the whole planet and the shifting of chemicals in a century or two that spent millions of years getting where they are. What's true is that sometimes such runaway feedback can seem impossible to have predicted. And then, as an engineer of sound, my anxiety suddenly bursts. This feels like doing a backflip by reflex. reflex. There is pain in my spine. Instantly, fear rising as my own and others' ability to hear their loved ones in the future is directly risked. My gear for work is potentially damaged. My ability to continue renting is questioned in a shared building with neighbors and so on. This kind of terminology is not a metaphor. It's actually a valid scientific description that correlates to the brain, audio, physics, language, neuroscience, culture, etc. This kind of thing is in a long line of deep ecological thought by deep ecologists, I am informally and formally insisting my experience of schizophrenia and epilepsy and chronic pain and music is salient. My doctor does approve though. He, he, he didn't want to prescribe deny at all. My psychiatrist told me when I asked for an open opinion that he thinks schizophrenia's problem is in the issue of salience, which just refers to issues of keeping things focused, relevant, clear, appropriate. Imagine the thought broadcast of a street corner prophet or someone not schizophrenic at all, but just angry, lacking relevance and evidence like an ordinary conspiracy theorist, like a standard germ culture or human diversity denier. The way my thoughts about what's occurring in my mind and body and the social and ecological problems of the whole planet that they do intimately connect is not paranoid conspiracy or beside the point. Instead, I'm pointing out the actual dynamics at play in any system, just as a scientist does with respect to scientific traditions. We are complex dynamical systems. It doesn't matter whether someone assumes you cannot know what the nature of reality is, like Rene Descartes, who thought therefore he was, 
it does matter that a heretic like Baruch Spinoza, who considered nature to be God, was placed under house arrest for spreading religious misinformation. Plain and simple, I would like to acknowledge God is more like a blind, impersonal nature. We must churn hope from ourselves to build and hold on to respect. God is not reflected at all in some bearded, beer-swilling, barbecue, self-oscillating sky dude or whatever, returning to the 21st century, of course. Of course, our differences are irrelevant and making a connection is crucial. Beyonce is my favorite country band. And I like the new album, Cowboy Carter. I'm just saying, Beyonce must be allowed to make the American flag look sexy. Because if the flag cannot be symbolized with such unusual beauty, and Beyonce may only be criticized for doing so, that's it. I must no longer be allowed to hope America could accept change or get better instead of get worse. That's due to logic and truth. That's a reflection. That's an output. Where is the potential feedback? Where's that input? Do you have an imagination? I encourage you to listen to the album Cowboy Carter if you like Beyonce, hip hop, electronic music, folk music, country music. Listen to Groove with personal along with group development or just for fun. Listen if you want to dance and feel no pain. Go easy on yourself. Beyonce's honesty lifts us from these dark times. Bay carries. To many others, recognize the same. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Oh, shit.